It has been six months since the fall of Cognosa and the destruction of Lucian. The Mighty Nine, returning back to Wildmount and Exandria proper, have dealt with the immediate ramifications of the decisions they've made, the arrests of Trent Ikathon, the reality that they've come to a point of closure mm. across many stories, and now have their lives to continue on from this point. After some uh, tearful goodbyes to friends and allies until you meet them again, to deciding what the next journey was before you, the group that you know as the Mighty Nine fractured a bit to pursue personal journeys, to discover who they are outside of the struggles that brought them together, but never losing the binds that originally brought them as a team and since made them a family. Uh, let's go ahead and begin in Nicodronus with you. Again? Death, Bernada. <laughs> <laughs> I just talked. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Dial it in. Dial it in. <clears throat> Where are you right now? What are you doing? Oh boy. Uh, Veth is making uh, uh, making plans to to receive uh, the first ever crop of new campers at uh, at. Their new, uh, their new camp that they've just been setting up for the past six months. It's a camp for talented young adventurers, young arcane practitioners, mages in training, fighters, rogues, um, and uh, we will receive these talented youngsters and train them into uh, fighters or defenders for their own villages, wherever they might come from. Um, uh, the camp is called the Wild Mount Wildlings, Wild out! Um, <laughs> we have we have T-shirts that are made with wild out on it, um, and uh, the different cabins that they might be staying in. There's uh, there's the Happy Fun Cabin. There's a cabin called the Shikasta Cabin. There's A5 Cabin. Uh, there's the Ball Leader Cabin. Yes, uh, uh, recommended against that one. <laughs> uh, uh, the last thing I'll say about this camp, I'm so excited about it. I'm sorry, I'm going on and on about it. It's free. It's free. You don't have to pay for it because we have a wealthy benefactor named The Gentleman. And he and I have this lovely arrangement wherein he takes his blood money <laughs> and launders it oh, no. by... by having no. a legitimate charity no. that he donates it to, Boy. and whatever I don't use, I send back to him. There it is. And it's clean, you know? It's, cl it's a clean Boy, arrangement. Oh, the kids get something, <laughs> he gets something, everyone gets something from it. Oh, geez. As you're kind of traveling down, you look to your left and uh, passing by your husband's recently opened shop here in Nicodronus, um, the Bernardo's Better Self. His reinvention of his alchemy business here uh, in the town of Nicodranus hasn't seen a whole lot of business yet, but you're, uh, you know, he's very eager and, and excited that word will catch on. Um, but uh, as you kind of walk through the street, you kind of see him putting up a new sign, <laughs> nailing it to the front that says, Grand opening! He's put up the sign three times, but it's been, it's been there for like the better part of a month. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pull away from. Uh, Nicodronus, and instead head over towards Zadash in the middle of the Dundalian Empire. Shh! And out comes barreling a busied, intense looking Beauregard lionette. Beauregard, um, if you could <laughs> describe your exit from the circle and where you're off to. With a deep intent to be off the clock as quickly as possible, and at home, and on the couch. With, with my woman, in her her home cooked meal, and I'm, I'm fucking I'm fucking done, fucking done. <laughs> oh, 
She's Grace. She's Claire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when are you going to start role playing? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you need a fucking cocktail. <laughs> uh, as you're charging out, the, uh, the library guardian is sitting there, stands up and notices your arrival and quickly tries to like. Hail you. Off the clock. But uh, regard, uh, the, I'm off the, the clock. Uh, okay. <laughs> Work sense. life boundaries. We've talked about this. Of course, of course. Sits back down and continues to read, not making eye contact. I'll be in tomorrow, 8 a.m. As you head out from the streets, you go ahead and arc over towards the Innerstead Sprawl to your home, if you wouldn't mind describing what your home looks like. Oh. Imagine we would have to do this together. Yeah. I imagine it's like, you know, it's nothing super elaborate. No, nothing, nothing wild. Super cozy, very cozy. We have a garden that, you know, I've been working on with Caduceus, so we could uh, plant and have a, a little piece of land just for ourselves. Yes, yeah, absolutely. We got Quaint. a nice little ivy kind of growing up the front, or at least, yes. a, you know, trying to get it to grow. A small fireplace with a, our cushy couch and yeah. a furry rug and... Yeah, I took a spare room and I turned it into my office. Yes, you have to have an office. I have to have my own office. Yes. It's a bit of a mess. I also have a side, I have my own cave. Also, yeah. you know, it has some, um, some workout gear, but mostly, <laughs> you know, <laughs> painting and, yeah. and different kind of, of cooking things. You know, I'm learning, I've been learning a lot from our neighbor, um, Martina Stewart, who's a very good cook. She's taught me so much. She's taught me so much. And good old Martina. Good old, good old Miss Stewart. Good old MS. Miss Stewart. Um, when you come home, um, I'm outside, sort of, with my little basket, and I'm collecting edible flowers to put in the basket. Oh, oh, like nasturtiums. Yes. Little, yeah. Baby. 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 <laughs> Come here. Baby. I miss you. <laughs> okay. Oh, I was a little crazy for dinner tonight. What did, what did so, you do? We're going to have a wedge salad mm. with tomatoes from our garden. Okay. And, and uh, heirloom, of course. <clears throat> Fuck, those are in season. Yeah, they're Forgot. in season, which is why they're so oh, juicy, delicious, yes. even like an apple. I would and greatly recommend them with a soft saute oh. and salt as you turn around and see the halfling kind of uh, graying blonde hair of uh, of Martina Stewart <laughs> who is out front of her yard now in like kind of a, a billowing blouse with her own basket. <laughs> kind of leaning oh, forward. Hello, Martina. Um, Martina. Earlier, earlier today. Beauregard, nice to see you. Hi. Mm. Yeah, you were, you, were, you were listening. Earlier I was today. in my house yard mm. and you walked by, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, come, 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 come. Okay. Uh, <laughs> just like I go in and I just plop and I kind of like face plant. How was your day? It was honey? fine. <laughs> it was fine. What's wrong? I feel like. Put your feet up. Come, come, come. Okay. Oh my God. Oh, thank you. Oh God, these fucking boots that they're making us wear. Yeah, now. these are intense. Oh. I actually kind of like them. Can I try them on? Actually? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cute. They might be a little, a little small for you. Yeah, they're like I can small. also just swipe you a pair. They'll I never mean... notice. <laughs> <sighs> no, it's fine. It's just you know I keep going back and forth to Rexentrum and trying to like track the assembly, but they're just they're all so skittish right now after everything. Yeah. So they're not doing anything. It's so fucking boring. Yeah, they're a little quiet. Which I don't know if that's a good thing, but it also kind of makes me more nervous. I mean, they're always, they're clearly still up to stuff, you know, and so it's just trying to figure out how to get in, and I keep trying to convince Caleb to go in and like take this teaching job, that way we can have an inside man, but he's like, oh, just, you know, I wanna dip my feet in, and it's just. Why, he needs wow, to wow. do it. <laughs> he and the adds to do it. He needs to do it. And then, like, Dolla Fawn is like, oh, Ugh. you know, patience and time, you reveal all truths. Uh, I don't know, just if I have to, like, file one more report or, like, do one more security watch, I'm just gonna go insane. <laughs> what would you like to eat? Or do you wanna just sit by the fire and have some mm. wine first? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's do that. Here you go, baby. Mm. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Tink. I'm gonna go finish cooking. Okay. 
<laughs> we now draw our attention away from Zadash, and instead, far off across the Menagerie coast, the Swavain Island, somewhere amongst the waters, there is a ship. The Ball Eater itself has been at sea for some time. Uh, if Ford, Jester, and Kingsley, who are aboard this, uh, describe where you are currently amongst the ocean, Captain, I imagine, mm. and what your current business is. <laughs> well, I think we, um, we've we established a, a sort of a trade route where we monitor the waters in between the Menagerie Coast and Darktow. Um, we're also start, starting to try and put to sea, if you will, a venture called uh, a Stone's Throw Shipping. <laughs> Stones Ooh, throw. Right. We're, work, we're workshopping it. No, I like mm. it. Um, every time I say it, though, Jester kind of winces and smiles with her teeth. No, it's good. It's really good. I like that. That face. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to make a name for ourselves, but uh, after buying a, a very small, a, a little a little piece of, of property in Nicodronus, because, you know, we didn't want to live under. I think it would have been fine if we would have stayed at the Lava Chateau. It was weird. But I understand that you feel a little bit I mean, bit we're exploring. About it. Each other, and it seems you know it's it's a weird place to have that happen. Right, right. So I really like our place, though. It is very little, but we've painted it up. It's every time we come into it's port, a lot of you know, color. we're fixing it up. It's really nice. Maybe too much color. And then there's you know a little side section where I have my own art studio, you know, mm -hmm. which is really fun. Yes, the the studio is the house. Well. Yeah. There's um, you know the couch is on the one side, and then the other side it's the art studio. My is haven. The, the couch. We don't spend much time there. Uh, we're working on it. Mm. But Kingsley has also uh, been a tremendous uh, help uh, and is learning the ropes. It's a bit of a problem, if you think about it, that your shipping company is always a stone's throw away. That means that it hasn't gotten very far, isn't it? Look, it's we didn't go that deep with it. He I'll, didn't go that deep with it. Unless I... you have incredible strength. They're also ballista, and that is... A very far, th it's okay. It, we weren't sold on it or anything. We only printed how many of the cards? Well, I didn't print them. I made them all by hand. Handmade. So Shit. Right. there's like five of them so far. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I think that's all you need at this point I because mean, if you're shipping something, then you're not going to be meeting a lot of people. Who I think need, it's catchy. I think it's catchy. Need. Yeah, yes, yes. we'll make it like work. A thrown stone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we um, <laughs> we monitor those 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 waters and do what we can. Yeah, we look at the water a lot. <laughs> Right. Branding well, is not your strong suit. <laughs> no, no. We pull away from the ship in the ocean, instead back to the massive capital city of the Dundalian Empire, known as Rexentrum. In the process of finishing a lecture, the guest teacher, Caleb Wittercast. Uh, on the tail end of a guest <clears throat> lecture, because I'm I don't have tenure here or anything. Uh, Astrid has been trying to coax me, Beauregard as well, to take a position, but I'm not quite ready for that. I've only been home for a few months, but here I am speaking to these students and I'm on the tail end. Make time in your studies for history or you will be doomed to repeat it. History is littered with sharp-minded individuals like yourselves who bit off more than they can chew. And it somehow always comes back to bite them in the butt. But that is all for today. Bish better. Dear students, uh, give a, a warm uh, and, and round of applause and thank you for our guest speaker, um, a previous alumni student of the Academy, uh, Mr. Caleb Widogast. Thank you so much for coming. Um, so and much more. It's a class dismissed. <clears throat> the students right, begin Gunter, just quickly. <laughs> gathering their things, their books, and picking up their satchels and the bustle of them all discussing things you completely unrelated to the class. Later? Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 just like the other I love. Uh, no, as, <laughs> as the uh, still feels beyond surreal to be here. And uh Beauregard has been pushing me to take up permanently. Maybe I will, but not quite ready yet. Anyway, she'll want to report for the day. Uh, we share a sending stone now to uh, share information back and forth between the cities, so I'm going to head back to uh, my own small cottage, which is um, 
uh, very much in the style of the home that uh, Bren was raised in. Uh, there's uh, two small planter boxes out front full of green beans uh, and a room at the back where he teaches uh, a handful of students who uh, were not accepted at the academy, who still show great promise. I think that he will uh, put up the tower inside his home. Uh, the, the home is really more of a front and he'll spend time in the uh, study and um, wonder if he'll get a visit from uh, uh, his crin friend uh, this week. All right. At the waning day of light brings you a very dark coming evening in the midst of this storm. And with Orly leaving, um, anytime something moves this, this quickly, he's been at sea enough that uh, he tries to discern whether it's just a natural moving storm or if there's anything that pings a, a more foreboding sense for Fort. Eventually the rain hits the surface of your ship. It's cold. But you get a colder sensation, Ford. Less a new layer of chiller and more like a present warm that begins to fade, revealing the ice that's always been beneath. <clears throat> the winds grow louder as the rain begins to pick up heavier and heavier. You've been through some terrible storms in your time. This doesn't look like it's any worse than some of the worst that you've been through, but that sense that still kind of eats away inside. Usually in such spaces, you feel the Wild Mother's eyes upon you and a sense of guidance and direction, but here it's absence. Uh, Kingsley, as you kind of glance over, another flash of light off in the distance, back lit against another rising wave and you see something in the wave. For a split second, as it kind of crashes over and diminishes, you see what you think look to be shoulders and a head. But they're humanoid and far larger than a person should be before the waves swell up again, and it's gone. Captain, there's a big thing in the water. You got to be more specific than thing. It's like a, a giant, bigger than a giant. There's a giant person in the, there's something coming at us and it looks like a person, a very big person. There's a, like a white hot flash of pain and then you feel almost like yourself is drowning. You try and breathe and it's, it's water filling your lungs, a terrible familiar sense, the slipping of the warmth of your body, but you suddenly see darkness in front of you and you're reaching for kelp, you're reaching for surface and you're being pulled away into darkness the shadow takes you, and a voice long unheard quakes in your ear. I found you. <laughs> a yellow eye opens before you, before a bolt of lightning strikes nearby. The rain's hitting you, and you're holding onto the side of the ship back, conscious amongst your friends as the ship creaks back, landing back in the moving surf. Uh, I'd run to the starboard side. I'll summon the Star Razor. And Here's in your hand. I will. Do I want to do this? I'm gonna cast. Boy, it's been a minute. I'll cast uh, Fly on myself. Oh, okay. Yeah. You got Get it. off that ship and leave everybody to die. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> what, 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 what? Bye bye. <laughs> Workshop the name in my upset. Okay. <laughs> you go over to starboard side. You pull out the the sword and you cast fly on yourself. Just as you finish concentrating and uttering the words of the incantation, looking at the blade, you look back. Just as a massive hand oh. slams onto the deck of the ship. And. <laughs> The entire ship lurches again, the heavy impact sound of numerous wooden boards splintering and cracking. You see another hand oh. grapple up as a humanoid head about 10, 15 feet almost in width begins to climb up 
looking just over the ridge. You can see long, wet, scraggly white hair, a Ooh. kind of somewhat teal green blue skin, pale pupilless eyes, and a thick, heavy knotted beard filled with kelp and all sorts of broken materials that just drift through the sea <laughs> as it comes and glances over. Maybe just like a few feet from your head. Jesus. What do you do? Kingsley, fire the cannons! <laughs> uh, the massive, what you can see now to be a a giant, a humanoid, extremely tall, extremely strong giant that is climbing up the side of the ship, larger than any giant you've ever seen or probably heard of, uh, shouts out in this deep, resonant, bassy voice that quakes the wood you stand on. Where is it, traitor? Where is the key? The creature that now drifted up <laughs> off the side of the ship, kind of floating in the air. <laughs> you made blasphemy of their gifts, and your arrogance will cost you all that you love, unless you do as Thunum commands. Uh, all I want to do is run up to the giant and touch his hand. Okay. I'm going to run up to the giant and touch his hand. Do it, you rush up. It's easy to grab. It's like clutching on its fingers dug into the actual deck itself. Maybe you should let go. And I'm going to inflict wounds. Okay, go ahead and roll for uh, a spell attack wounds. against it. I'm going to inflict wounds at seventh level. Okay. Dude, oh. dude. Oh. Nice. 50 more points. Wins of necrotic damage. As you reach yeah. out and grab. It's on Laura's dice. We're like, I don't. <laughs> that pulse of dark energy spreads from your fingers into the veins of this entity, this massive, meaty, kind of blue green hand. As you grasp it, you watch the black sh shoot up, and all the veins in the hand, thick and thin, which on this scale are still massive, all immediately become visible as this dark, kind of awful black tar material kind of pulses through the bloodstream. So with that, you take uh, 10 points of slashing damage, and eight points of slashing damage. I'm unconscious. One of them rushes up behind and <laughs> double strikes Jester from behind, and you watch as the impact of it sends her chest forward and she slides like <laughs> into the wet surface of the ship for a second, now unconscious. Uh, the other two are now rushing up to try and engage the attack. I use, I use 60 feet of my uh, fly speed to Superman towards Jester as I see her fall unconscious. Rocket over to the body. And I uh, reach out and cast Cure Wounds as soon as I reach her. 40. Whoa. 40 hit points. Whoa. There you go, even Sorry. better. Plus five. Whoa. Um, oh, look at that, you're fine. Look at that. It's like it never happened. Amazing. I look at Jester and I say, forgive me, and I will push up off the deck and reach into the bag of holding and pull out the cloven crystal, the third eye. Okay. The minute you pull it out and present itself, you watch all of the scions, the ones that are clambering and attacking other crew members, all of a sudden just stop and stare and look over in that direction. You've never saw this before. I pull out a thing, I pull out a small box, uh, and I say, Abandoned ship, gather the crew, and I toss it off, and it folds into a, a small boat. Boat. <laughs> you have a boat in a box? I have a boat in a box. <laughs> Get my boat in a box. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> my boat it's not that box. I don't trust you, but I have a boat. I don't have a boat in a box. Uh, I'm going to send a message first to um, Caleb, since you said Caleb would be the one that needs to know immediately. Caleb, our boat sank. Everybody, well, oh no. Okatawa is awake or something. Ford gave away the key. We need you and Essek probably too. We're in. No. <laughs> <laughs> Jester, it's so good to hear from you. If you message me back, tell me where you are. Spell slot. That's all he said? That's all? 
<laughs> where are we for exactly? Orly, where are we exactly? There we go. <laughs> I'm going to send a message to Veth. <clears throat> you won't believe what just happened. Our boat sank. Ford gave away the key. We need your help. Twin. I'll... You have all, <clears throat> all the four. <laughs> You're trying to get fucking coordinates to Veth. <laughs> You got three more words. No, no, no. she's got, she's got oh, eight. Oh, eight. eight. Twin something islands. Look it up. See ya. Hey. <laughs> Twin sword. Uh, you hear back. <sighs> oh. <sighs> One second, guys. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, uh, <laughs> I heard, I heard uh, oh, uh, Twin Isles something. <laughs> I was distracted. <laughs> really good. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Yeah, we'll we'll see you then. We'll see you then. Okay, come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Beth is coming too. <laughs> what is Ukatoa and why are we why are we so concerned about this? Why was that whole thing felt very personal and I'm just I'm just saying I don't know where y'all have been, what you what you've been up to, but that felt I don't know. It wasn't random, I suppose. That had a a lot of very personal give me the key, I'm gonna sink your ship, AR yeah. uh, sense to it. Yes, uh, Ukuto is an ancient creature that I saw in dreams that gave me the first of my magical abilities, and I have two of the three keys and just gave up the third, which he needs to be released upon this plane and to wreak havoc. So, um, once they use that final key to open the final portal or chain or whatever it is that's shackling Ukatoa to his um, prison, then, you know, he'll come out and kill everyone, maybe? Yeah, in hindsight, it probably would have been smart to make sure that I was in safekeeping, but I held on to it and stayed at the sea at the same time with no clear exit <laughs> strategy or plan if you're attacked. <laughs> but, you know, what can you do? Honestly, it's one of the things I respect about you the most. That's a... As a bold move. Yeah, bold. Very bold. Immediately, um, I pull out my uh, sending stone. Um, hello, Beauregard, I know that it is outside working hours and that can be a bit of a prickly pear with you, but we have a bit of an emergency. Are you available to talk? Hang up. Oh. Give me one second, babe. Um, yeah, Caleb, hi, I can... I set the stone really? away from me, two feet away. <laughs> oh, <crap. laughs> really? Poor timing, every time. I know, every time, yes, this time. God damn it, I'm gonna... Pass me Martina's prune juice she gave us. Um, yeah, no, what, uh, what do you need? I just got a message from Jester. Uh, they are in trouble, big trouble. Ford has apparently handed over the last of his, um, crystals. You know what that means, yeah? He did what now? Right, so I'm going to Nicodranus now, and I'm going to attempt to swing by and pick up Veth. Uh, get your guest bedroom ready, because we might be staying the night. Uh, I'll let you know. Oh, well, I'm, I'm in I'm in, Z I'm in Zadash. Wait, are you coming here? Uh, are you yeah. coming here? We're road tripping? In a bit. Are we getting the gang back together? Yes, you know. Yeah! Okay, okay that's Babe. actually exciting. Babe, let's go! Yeah, 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 okay, okay, go. okay, sir, pat, uh, just a Put your clothes on. Okay. Um, you vanish out, appearing where? Uh, I think by the heirloom tomatoes mm. uh, in their garden. Okay. Uh. <laughs> oh, not the, not the heirloom. <laughs> uh, still ripe. Uh. <laughs> hello, hello? Swing open the door, and I've got two bottles of wine already open. Whoa. We're going to put the gang back together. <laughs> <laughs> Some action. Oh, come Beth. in, come in. I've been heating up uh, leftovers. 
I have it on apron mm-hmm. that says um, Zadashian in the streets, Jorhasian in the sheets. <laughs> <laughs> we are warming up some stew. I, you know, with the, sit, 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 sit. Oh. She made it strong enough. Yeah, yeah. Is this the recipe that, uh, what's her name? Yes, Weasel Tongue, the Martina. Not, not to, not to know. Martina Stewart? Oh my God, she's so great. She's so annoying. She's so, she's annoying, but she's very, very good cook. Her positivity is just so She's too, great. It's too much. It's, yeah. a, it's a lot. With it's cooking lot. like that, though, the rest does not matter. It's, it's true. No. Should we call Caduceus? Nah. Nah. He was sort of useless <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> he talked really slow. Yeah. He, he, he had good healing, though. We could just check in Did just he? to see, you know, because what if what if he finds out that we went to go do it, and then he was like, why didn't you call oh, me? He feels left out. Yeah, I don't that's think any of shitty. us are able to do that at the moment. Oh, I can yeah. try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what? If he responds, then we'll know. Okay. And if he doesn't, we can assume that he doesn't want to respond and that he doesn't want to come. Please, like literally save your kid. Okay. Just saying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Caduceus. Your old pal, Yasha here, from Mighty Nine. You know that. This is hard. Um, problem. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh no. Try this <laughs> now. <laughs> you got this, baby. How about this? Deserted. <laughs> Get the important stuff first. Twin word aisles. Okay. Ukotoa is free. <laughs> Good work, babe. You know, oh, we've got I five more. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, it's, just, it's still recording. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> <laughs> Hey! Oh, she doesn't. No. Oh, she doesn't actually have it. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Come in. Come in. Caduceus is alone and he just saw a beetle and he was like, hey! hey. <laughs> Caduceus would have just been laughing for a solid two minutes before. Yeah. You, kind of glancing in there, concentrating for a second, you hear the sound of footfalls and glance over and you can see some figures stepping from out of the ocean. Oh, I see you got our message. Ford? Hello! Chester? Kingsley? Bo? Hey! We go! Give her a big hug. <laughs> <laughs> Captain? Ford! Did you... You lost weight. You seem thinner, frailer. I think it's the seawater. Oh, maybe. Oh, you do look wet. Yeah. 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 Sorry, I tried to get oh. us here faster. I did my best. You did right. Oh, I, I should have just hello. teleported not into the water. That's that. You just look terrible. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. It's okay. We, you, it's uh, unavoidable. Uh, what I assume was it unavoidable? It was pretty unavoidable. It was pretty unavoidable. I mean, to Beth's point, I'm, I'm surprised this mm-hmm. hasn't happened sooner. So. And now there is a brewing supernatural force that could affect the entire world, and no one knows about this but us, <laughs> and we are the only ones who can stop it. I mean, this is our thing. <laughs> If we succeed, no one will know what we've done. If we fail, the world will end. This is what we do. This is what we're good at. <laughs> this is this what we're good at. The heroes no one asked for. Yes. Come on. This is a problematunity. How did you people ever <laughs> ever kill me? This is really ridiculous. All of you. It is. <sighs> as as the sun rises in the early morning, you arrive and the outskirts of. Jester and Ford's abode. Uh, what do they see as they arrive? Um, they see a bunch of potted plants, like stuck outside. Some of them half dead. <laughs> um, but like the ones, you know, there's like vines painted up on the side of the house, so it looks like they're growing out of the pots, even though they're not really. 
um, all sorts of different colors. Um, all sorts of different colors. Lots of different colors. Um, a little like fence that we're building, like that's trying to look like a white picket fence, but it's sort of falling down a little bit. And a blue turquoise door. But what, what about the house itself? Like, is it a, is large, small? Well, it's it's less like a house and more like like one sort of r- shady sort of room. I mean, it's big. It's a big one. It's a big room, you know? It's a studio. It's a studio. Open concept. Studio. Yeah, 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 yeah. Studio yeah, yeah, apartment. Yeah. There's like, you come in. Very modern. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so. And it's right underneath the water tower, you know? We decluttered a lot of the equipment that was uh, kept there before. We changed out oh, the wow. flooring. You live and, in um, a water tower? What? You live in a water tower? No, no, tower? below the water tower. Yeah. Below. But that would be really cool. That's the dream, right? Just to get that place. Yeah, I mean, can you guys you climb the water place? tower? Do you, ever, do you ever climb it and like watch the yeah, sunset? Yeah, we do. <gasps> that's, that's, that's cool. Yeah, that's, that's good, romantic. good viewing up there. It is super yeah. romantic. Wow. As you... Sit, your figurines placed out around you with Sprinkle kind of curled up in your lap as you begin to concentrate. As you close your eyes, you focus on that terrifying face. And as you reach into yourself to gather the spell, a little voice whispers in your ear, now it looks like you've gotten yourself into some more trouble, have you? Yeah, it's not good. Well, who would I be to deny you such a journey? And you feel kind of the hands of a tagging on yours. Say, open your eyes, see if this helps. And his fingers kind of flick your eyelids open. <laughs> and as you glance forward, you see here in the like flick mid-afternoon sun, the figure wrapped in like a tattered cloth, like a hood, clutched underneath his head like this with one arm and the other just kind of hanging at the side, pushing through bushes and across like a kind of raggedy looking hillish field, kind of like <sighs> keeping low and seeming to be not enjoying the bright sunlight. You can see in its left hand, as it kind of hangs to its side, clutching in its fist is the same glowing yellow cloven crystal. And it keeps it like near its side, almost like it's, it's Holding it like a like a like a precious object, um, you also pick up the sound, <clears throat> and kind of just glancing past the blurry radius of the scry spell's capabilities, you can see the looming shadow of a massive humanoid. Uh, you do see, not far from the southern edge of the jungle, cresting over what looks to be a, a hilly valley, a large, dark humanoid shape stepping and maybe about half an hour's distance from the edge of the jungle. There we are. Right. As we're flying, I'll attempt to speak into Ford's not ear. They're just about to hit the jungle. I found them. When we land, we can tell everybody. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? <laughs> do I understand? You do. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, the rest of you can come to stop uh, on the top of the canopy unless you wish to continue to push through. So wanting to avoid this, I, I kind of launch myself from from Kegel and kind of like a uh, monk hop down the, the tree branches. Then you make an acrobatics check for me as well. And I do have my unarmored movement. Which means I can do. Don't monk shit. Nope. Eighteen. Eighteen. You leap from the back of the eagle, and as you hear it crashing around you, your Tarzan sliding down the sides of the jungle tree, watching as the eagle crashes down and is about to hit the tree you're on, and you just kind of leap off to the next one. It almost becomes like a like a quick time, you know, yeah, boss moment as you're like dodging Triangle. dodging the eagle as Circle. it hits every branch, but <laughs> without issue, you're one step before it, and where it gets caught up in the tree above, you whoosh, land onto the soft. Seeing her do that, I'm going to do the same thing. All right. <laughs> what a roll. <laughs> it's terrible. Please tell me a gold Is it down the eye for acrobatics or something? Acrobatics. <laughs> 30. Whoa! <laughs> As you land, 
You feel this kind of on your back as you three-point three point land R. on her three-point yes. landing. <laughs> Wild out. <laughs> Wild out! <laughs> this is bullshit. Don't. I'm going for it, too. <laughs> acrobatics check. Acro uh, acrobatics check. Fine, me too. <laughs> you guys are flying. <laughs> oh. He's just doing this, guys. Uh, natural 20 for 36. Oh! Somehow a you... you suit out of the sky. <laughs> You feel a three-point landing from Kingsley onto your back. <laughs> onto your back. I I rolled a 19. For a total of? For a total of, of 19. 19. <laughs> <laughs> that was my total. And you, <laughs> thankfully, don't land on the trooper. Definitely <laughs> impact, kind of leaving a small dirt crater in the ground next to them. Okay. Oh, get off my yeah, back. Right. Get off my no, back. Right. Uh, okay. That's fine. That's so cool. The two, oh, no. You do within a short time, come upon what looks to be an abandoned camp left in tatters. Immediately at a glance, you can see it's old, and it looks like it has seen a very violent end before being just sundered by the elements. Can I attempt to discern what left this camp in tatters? A quick tatters. investigation check, if you like. Uh, was it months? Yeah, yes. did that, how long ago it Did the camp get destroyed months ago? Is it an old destruction or a new destruction of a old? That would be an investigation check here. Natural 20. Let's yes! Uh, oh. For a total of? For a total Much of, it. hang on. Dear God. Yes. That's uh, 36. <laughs> that is my bitch. <laughs> I love you. Immediately, this, this camp, uh, had probably been destroyed at least 50 or so years ago. Um, so depending on your expectations, it could have been much more recent or much older than you expected. That you also, wow. with the 36, you also find what looks to be amongst everything here that's been destroyed by the elements, now even further harried by the rain, you find under one barely dry section of the canvas, it looks like it's been undisturbed for a long time, uh, a hand that is mostly just bone and what looks to be aspects of shreds of mummified skin and a destroyed, torn apart journal. Uh, like you go and try and find it, and all the paper just disintegrates and it's 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 gone. But there are two semi-legible scraps that you pull from underneath. <gasps> Clues, 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 clues. Yes, 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 yes. That's very impressive. Taking the less, taking the less traveled pathways blah, 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 within the depths of the ruin, markings of the sun are a deadly invitation. This could be the yellow eye. Regardless of the Seemingly endless source, it says skipping ahead, seemingly endless source of venomous serpents, fun, oh. uh, seem to re, 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 something. Sir, something, oh, no. serene, no. nightmarish curse upon the stone itself. Dormant as they might be, light of, M. M seems to begin their exodus from hiding, and we know not when they will stop. You eventually stumble upon an odd statue that is partially obfuscated by the roots of one of these thick jungle trees wrapping around it. The older carving looks appears to be feminine, uh, the features round, um, but it looks like it's been here for quite some time. Looking at the design, looking at the body, looking at the, the shape, and you, you, Ford, clocked this about the same time. There's an aspect of the presentation of it that reminds you of the lighthouse in Nicodronus. And that cold sense that feels like it was pulled free and exposed to the stars above since the night. Uh, a hint of that warmth begins to return to your body. What is this? What maybe, is this stone? Yeah, maybe the gem is connected to her or something. At the least, maybe it's expensive. 
<laughs> can I look at it? Can I get a good look at the stone? Yeah, it, it looks beautifully carved, and it looks like it's handled the elements well enough, kind of captured and held behind one of the major roots that had kind of grown around it over time. Give me uh, 10 minutes. <laughs> Give me 10 minutes with it, uh, and Caleb will pull out his book and begin to virtually cast Identify. It takes 11 minutes to do. Okay. At the end of your 11-minute period, um, the jade itself does reveal a magical essence to it, a divine magical essence, a uh, enduring blessing upon the gem. While the name has been long lost to the uh, annals of history and time, you know that it brings a, a blessing of luck and good, good faith and goodwill to whoever wields it. There is a minute clearing. The canopy curls back up to kind of consume it with a few broken bits of what, look, what would be uh, probably shafts of sunlight piecing through, if not for the clouds above and the rain that falls within. But here you can see a green clearing of vines and ferns and all manner of jungle bush and compost uh, along the ground and what looks to be a a temple of some kind, a gray, yellowish, almost sandstone coloration temple that looks like it has mostly fallen into itself. This is where we stage our ambush. Keeping okay. your ear still perked mm -hmm. forward, you can still hear the occasional crunching sound and distant footfall, not terribly far from where you are. You can see there's a gap, about a three-foot gap between them, uh, at its widest, well, like two, two, two and a half feet. Um, and there within, you can see there is a deeper path below. I will message forward. There's an entrance at the top. It's very small, but we can get in. You can reply to this message. Mm -hmm. hmm. Fight out here or fatal funnels. Everybody to the top. All right. All right. Okay. You all go running, mm -hmm. scattering from the tree edge to where the temple is. To this point, you hear the <laughs> crashing sound of one of the nearby trees on the southern ring of this interior come falling with it. <laughs> As it hits the ground, you can see its boughs shake. Bits of dust and water just end up scattered to the ground. Uh, and there you see now, like pushing through arms, pulling itself out from the hole left in this ring-like canopy cage around this temple ruin. The storm giant pushing through. 